Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the general show So we are back with another episode This is a very interesting one Because it talks about businesses And yeah, it's a very interesting one So recently uh, Michael Jordan has decided to sell his basketball team uh, he was a majority shareholder of the charlotte hornets for those that um, watch basketball so we'll be breaking that down and we'll you tell me what you think about it so the reason i'm reviewing this is for us to be cognizant of certain transitions uh, sports people have to go through for instance, being a player and then being an owner or being a player and then being a coach. Those are two different sides of a coin. Being great at one thing doesn't automatically make you great at the other. But equally so, if you really put in the work or you are of a different breed, you actually end up being good at both, you see. So this is literally one of the prime examples of it. And... I hope you enjoy and interact with this. So let's get started. So as I mentioned, Michael Jordan bought the Charlotte Hornets for the same pennies um, on the dollar back in 2010. Um, and on the team's recent $3 billion sale, he has now made money on the Hornets for at least well over $2 billion dollars. Then he has done 40 years with his Nike deal, which is $1.8 billion. But can't really compare pears and peaches. But yeah, I guess that's it. So let's get into the side of it. So this is about the history of the Charlotte Hornets, right? So in 2003, Robert Johnson was one of top people in the world, right? He had just sold BT Network for three billion and was the first black billionaire in American history. So BT is like an entertainment channel. They do music, art, essentially anything in entertainment and they were documenting black people's happenings. They still do even now to whoever the owner is, but um yeah he was one of the first guys to do it and then he had just sold the bt network for three billion and was first black billionaire in american history so johnson paid 300 million dollars to expand um and bring in the charlotte hornets into the nba so nba is actually arguably the best um what do you call this uh basketball team in the league in the world you see so he had to spend that much and then laid out a master plan including he had a regional sports network with the team's television broadcasting rights but that didn't work um i must commend uh, robert johnson because clearly he doesn't stay in one place so if he's moving from the entertainment side and then he's thought that expanding into sports because sports is such an integral part of human society so him having done that was actually a very good move. Um, and with business, there are wins and there are losses. But then it seemed that him trying to open a regional sports network didn't quite work out. I think it was a bit too early for the time because um, you may have a great plan. The best thing in life is you hoping that it works out at that time. But yeah, as his regional sports channel failed, yeah? Um, after just one season, and then when the team was losing $25 million annually, Johnson fired more than 40 employees to cut costs. Um, I'm not sure as to how much it costs to run a basketball team, but then for him to, say, to fire such a large amount of people, they must have been bleeding serious amounts of money. Besides the $25 million, I think even the integrity of the team itself uh, maybe the team morale wasn't there at most and yeah it could have been a lot of factors but that's what was happening then but johnson kept dumpling what was happening in charlotte telling fans that winning would solve everything um, i'm not necessarily sure 
what he was thinking. I think him coming from an entertainment side, he thought that um, things could be at face value. So with sports, one thing I know is that it, it's more of a camaraderie more than what people see. There needs to be a sense of belonging, a sense of unity, a sense of identity. It's not just, okay, I buy this. And then everyone now supports it. It needs to have a holistic approach to things. And maybe his approach wasn't the best of the best, you see. So then he was able to convince Michael Jordan to buy a minority into the team in exchange for complete control of all the basketball decisions. It made sense to Johnson because that was an NBA legend. Um, he thought that because he was a player, he'd understand the culture and then end. But I think... In Michael Jordan's case, it's a different dynamic because he was literally fixated on basketball only, not the business side of basketball, you see. And I don't think by then there were a lot of financial advisors for him to help him out then, you see. So could have been a mess. Um, it sounded like a great idea at the time, but and MJ was the greatest basketball player, as I mentioned before. His knowledge alone could build a winning team. I don't necessarily agree with this because um, there's so many great players that were great players, but then they couldn't replicate that into other players' mindsets and psyches and team building because it was more of an individualistic journey. And as people, our understanding, commitment, and drive isn't the same. So, in as much as let's say I'm the fastest man ever, I can't input that into the next person. Maybe they don't have the same drive as me, the same talent, and and and. It's a fifty-fifty, you see. So the Charlotte Hornets spent hundreds of millions of dollars on free agents. They fired and had coaches, and they drafted several players into the top ten, including. Adam Morrison, Brandon Wright, and DJ Austin. Um, all three respectively number three, eight, and nine. Okay, but the Charlotte still didn't make the playoffs a single time and have a winning record from 2005 to 2009. Again, as I said, just because I was a sporting great doesn't mean that I'll be an excellent business person. Even though I made money from business, doesn't mean that... I can do it at such a macro scale because remember, I can make an excellent business deal by myself, but that doesn't mean that I can now manage a hedge fund for like 50 companies or so. Those are different dynamics. And I think that's where they got it wrong. And unfortunately, they took a lot of L's because, as I mentioned before, um, it's more than just taking the best of the best. It's, it's, a, it's a sport. It needs camaraderie from all angles and approaches it's not one-sided you see so yeah that was the happenings there and then um to make matters worse charlotte's attendance dropped under michael jordan um as i said just because you're michael jordan um i don't think from what i've watched and from everything else he's not necessarily the most uh charismatic in terms of garnering people's support and so forth. Yes, his talent, undeniable, but then if teammates talk about his selfishness, ego, and his destructiveness, uh, I don't think that would translate into a boss. Because as I mentioned, it's a team effort, having a team. Uh, it's not just uh, something that you can emulate out of nowhere. And then, so Charlotte Hornets actually had a... Um, Horrible attendance, according to these figures, 2006, 637,520, 2007, that dropped by 34,000, and then 2008, it dropped again by 8,000. So, yeah, it wasn't good. And then Robert Johnson was also investing in many other businesses, so I think he was just trying to diversify all the money that he'd made from the BT sale, um, which somewhat makes sense because he was buying car dealerships private equity funds production studios and even a business that installs slot machines in airports uh throughout the caribbean yeah he was really trying to diversify his money um in terms of business once again there's no one size fits all but i think over diversification too quickly um is also another problem uh, as i've said before in many of my episodes wealth is actually 
a slow pressure cooker it takes time there are a lot of things that you need to get right and a lot of things that you get wrong so i think mr robertson here Mr. johnson here had made a serious blend out the over diversification but i understand it had to happen that way for him to learn the tools of the trade and one couldn't necessarily fault him because remember look at the times it's not like now and then um unfortunately he had a costly divorce i think this is michael jordan and then with his nba team sold down in debt johnson needed cash and decided to put the team up for sale his initial ask price was 350 million um okay so it was a 50 million profit for him from the initial but then with several million dollars in the upcoming interest payments johnson was close to becoming illiquid and quickly sold the team to michael jordan unfortunately for a loss of 25 million or which was um 275 million dollars so johnson was uh, going through a divorce um I presume he didn't have a peanut hence they are saying the costly divorce and he was over diversifying on the other side so yeah he must have been going through a very hectic period in his life um yeah it happens to the best of us but hey man his midlife crisis was a lot of crunching millions at that time which i think this is if you use this current market's inflation rate this is literally a billion which is playing around with just the charlotte hornets but then yeah uh, michael jordan bought it for 25 million mm, he had the money and around this period there was a lot of michael jordan sales he was getting movies documentaries things were flowing and it, this was just before the market crash so him having this money the economy crashing also benefited him somewhat so he got it f from mr johnson uh i'm talking about michael jordan and then yeah he got it somewhat cheap for 275 as i mentioned because the 25 million it had to be lost because um mr johnson was going through financial turmoil which is pretty devastating i can imagine and then <laughs> they're saying that's only half of the story because the daily beast later reported that mg actually only put out 25 million dollars in cash and then a large portion of it was valuation an existing debt on the business so in simple terms mj paid just 25 million out of the pocket for the team mm, that's a very good bargain but yeah the nitty gritties of debt um but fast forward a decade and michael jordan's ownership uh tenor is also ending uh mj certainly didn't win much of the charlotte hornets okay so now they crunching down the specifics of the sale so from 275 we actually find out that michael jordan actually just took out 25 million hmm, that's very interesting and then the other was um in uh, valuation and the existing debt of the business so you see with this existing debt valuation thing you need to be able to suss out what's happening because sometimes you think you're buying a company or business cheap, but then they have a lot of debt and then that debt can actually sink you because you end up refinancing, refinancing, changing the terms of the repayments and, 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 and it's literally almost a never ending pitfall. So you need to be mindful of this. Um, it was very interesting for Michael Jordan to have taken out the 25 million at the time. It means that they must have trusted each other and Michael Jordan must have trusted his brand. Um, I'm still saying his business brand, whoever's advising him, um, they don't all, always look out for the best of him because when he talks person, oh man, shoots himself in the foot but yeah it's a story for another day so with the team number one he'd never won much right he never won a playoff series never finished higher than six in the east fifth was winning percentage in the nba but with the media rights drastically increasing mj still won big time as an owner as an nba owner because 
he's selling the team for three billion dollars valuation. Mm, from having bought it from um twenty five million dollars or two hundred and seventy five, including valuation and debt, to three billion dollars. That is a major win. Um, kudos to him and his advisors. And then they see for context this double. That's double the 1.5 million valuation he received when selling 20% of the team in 2020. Ah, so he did try and diversify himself also. Um, I mean, he tried to expand the business partners in 2020, hoping that the Hornets would perform better, but no, it wasn't working. Um, and then, so it means... In total, it's actually made more than $3, million, $3 billion because isn't it, the 20% of the 2020 portion sale is $1.5 billion and then now the estimated $2 billion profit. So it's quite a lot. That's 70% higher than the $1.7 valuation Forbes gave franchise just nine months ago. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So even the evaluators even got a higher purchase uh, valuation so no that's good um now this is good money moves and i wonder what he did to increase the valuation of the company uh by over 70 percent maybe he has that good pr team which is good and i think also his documentary helped him a lot and then um the last aspect is it represents an 11 times revenue multiple which is much bigger than what the average nfl seven times nba 8.4 times or even mls 10 times teams would typically trade for and it's the seven most expensive sports sale in history ah okay so that's very really interesting his so his brand ultimately is working for him but as a business owner but then in terms of the team um and culture and fans they're taking a major loss because they're dwindling they don't have a good record it's like they're just there for the participation's medal and then it ends there so the point is quite simple many people talk about how michael jordan failed as an nba owner but a three billion sale means that he will personally make more than two billion on deals after taxes and litigation and to be fair that is a very huge win so Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for staying and watching this episode. I hope you like, comment, share, and subscribe. This was um, an attempt of me discussing different business portfolios because I uh, genuinely am interested in how we maneuver around money in different contexts for us as people so that we can learn um, where we can, we apply, where we need to learn lessons we learn but ultimately man we're here for a good time and not a long time well done to michael jordan for making all of those billions hopefully the person who buys the shoulder hornets will be able to quantify it properly please like comment share and subscribe